In other news, uh, I am in the path of yet another storm. Must be a. Uh, I mean, you do kind of live summer. right on the hurricane highway. I'm lucky we've had so many near misses. Even that one five years back that just trashed our backyard. I mean, nothing's landed on us yet. Thank fingers freaking crossed. Nothing's landed on us. I haven't gone off to Oz and crushed somebody's sister. So, you know, but uh, this is, I, I just want to, I got so mad. I started yelling at the storm on, on, uh, on social media earlier last week. And I was you like, have yeah, literally become old man yells at cloud. I was like, go F off F in sky fart a palooza, do something else. So, um, let me show everybody this. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate that I am actually Tootsie am magic. I, I scared Tara. I scared a hurricane. Uh, so if you look right there, there is a, uh, <laughs> you can see there's, there's about where I am. There, there's Charleston. And you see this big track that goes the F around me. <laughs> Just this big curve. That's like, you know what? Don't mess with him. That I did that. I, that was me. It's, it is absolutely not time to stomp on the keyboard. I know I love you too, but it is not time for stomping on the keyboard. It's never actually time for stomping on the keyboard. Old man yells at clouds. I scared the no, sky, you're, Tara. You're so not sneaky, my dude. He then he just sits and is like, I'm just going to put one paw on the keyboard. Stop typing, you little monster. How, how, I just it, it, I just did a meteorological miracle, Tara. I, I'm I sorry, get nothing. I, I get nothing. Nothing. I know, I'm sorry. I'm not appreciated in my time. Keyboard. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Simba was very not appreciated in my time. coming over to tell you how impressed oh. he was. Sure and he I was. wouldn't let him type because sure I'm he history's greatest monster. Right? Do you want to tell Nash how cool he is? Because he scared away the weather? No. Apparently not. The moments passed. Okay. It's passed. Do you All sit right. on your keyboard and not on my keyboard, please? Thank you. Let's get the intro rolling. Here we go. Each week, Catherine, the radio dead air lines go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And, uh, all right. Typically on this show, we have avoided political stories over the years, mainly because as time has advanced, they've gotten too stupid for us. Like they, they're trying they've to get too upsetting. We, yeah. Like, that, and we, so we've been, it isn't even funny anymore. We've been trying to compete with, with just terrible things. This week, however, I cannot ignore this story because this is the most legendary what the fuckery, considering the pedigree involved, considering all of the circumstances. You could not. This is God got drunk is my only explanation here. Like every time you think you've hit, this is as crazy as this is going to get now. RFK Jr. admits to dumping dead bear in Central Park, solving a decade-old mystery. So back in 2014, in the middle of Central Park, someone was jogging along, as they want to do in Central Park, and they found a dead bear cub underneath a bicycle in a bike lane. Now... Apparently that aspect of the story got completely lost because it was easy to determine the bear had been hit by a car. Apparently there were also stab wounds. Maybe, yeah. So it, it's, it was already, and bears um, are not indigenous to Central Goddamn Park. No. That's not their natural fucking habitat. 
Barry is so, not really fond of Manhattan with all the noise and the people. So no one understood this. And it just got reported on. And time passed. Here we are 10 years later. Someone had finally done the work, the reporting work to dig this up and was about to go public with it. They had found the culprit. So RFK Jr. decided to get ahead of the story. With Roseanne Barr. For reasons. Know, for, like the whole video I was watching and I'm like, is that Roseanne? Whoever that is looks remarkably like Roseanne. But it was not that be Roseanne? He made a video with Roseanne Barr trying what he thought was a sane explanation. I don't know yeah. how. But he thought it was. So well, it shows him I was just taking my friends for some falconry. Not it shows him part. sitting. People do falconry. It shows him sitting at a kitchen table, telling an incredulous looking Roseanne Barr about how the dead bear ended up in his van upstate and ultimately on top of a bicycle beneath the bush in New York City's largest urban park. Kennedy, an animal lover. What the fuck, NPR, really? And former environmental lawyer said he was driving upstate early one morning to take a group of people falconing in the Hudson Valley when a driver in front of him fatally hit a bear club. So I pulled over, quote, and picked up the bear and put it in the back of my van because I was going to skin the bear. It was in very good condition and I was going to put the meat in my refrigerator. So already we have RFK Jr., the final scion of the Kennedy family, son of Bobby Jr., nephew no, to I mean, JFK his himself. Kid dated Taylor Swift <laughs> for like a minute and a half. And this guy, one of the one of the, the political dynasties of America, love him or hate him. Sometimes if you both, were raised Irish Catholic, basically the royal family decided, hey, somebody hit a bear. I'm not going to call the authorities. I'm not going to do. I'm just going to go over there and throw it in the back of my van to eat it. Yeah. Roadkill. Here's a fucking Kennedy. Try to eat roadkill. I'm already this story is making my brain go. He actually someone in the chat was like, maybe that's where he got the worms. He actually makes that joke in the video that that might be how he got the brain. Uh, it just. Uh, but then like, uh, but, but wait, there's more. So he was going to take it home, but the bear never made home. Kennedy no. says he got way late he after had dinner he, reservations at Peter Luger's. Got way late by a busy roadkill. Got waylaid by a busy day of falconry, then had to rush back to New York City for a dinner at Peter Luger Steakhouse, which ran late. I had to go to the airport and the bear was in my car and I didn't want to leave the bear in the car because that would have been bad. Why is it bad now? <laughs> Why? Robert, Why does it just get bad? Why did that become <laughs> bad? You've had a dead bear in your car you found on the side of the road. That all was day. your first initial all day. And now it's like, oh, well, this could get bad. And the conspiracy theory I have seen about the stab wounds is that the bear actually wasn't dead. So he finished it off. Like, yes, the brainworm story is also real. Pretty much when it comes to this dude, if you hear some crazy shit, it's probably true. I know that's normally the opposite of what we tell you, but this guy. He's an anomaly. S so Kennedy just happened to have an old bike in his car, which he said someone had asked him to get rid of. He recalled the city had just put in the bike lane after a number of city or serious accidents and decide to, decided to stage the bear in Central Park as if it had been hit by a bike. Because as we all know, bike versus bear, bike wins every time. Totally. No, it was a baby bear. But it was a cub. Still, it was a cub. those are just smaller fuzzy tanks.
so, so this this all sounds like it's lies. It sounds like a story he's making up, but it's also not. Yeah. I quote, I wasn't drinking of walking mad limbs. Quote, I wasn't drinking, of course, but people were drinking with me who thought this was a good idea, Kennedy said. So we went and did that. We thought it would be amusing for whoever found it or something. And through the whole video, Roseanne Barr is like holding a coffee cup and her face, the whole video is just like. And this is Roseanne. Roseanne. This who's right. made it a point to just insane. fuck with. Yeah, she she has no gives she's no just like, what Am I what? safe here? <laughs> but it gets stranger because the person the New York Times reporter who covered the story and tried to figure out how it how it happened was Robert Kennedy Jr.'s niece. Yep. Tatiana Slashberg. Can you imagine? Now, listen, I, I, I'm going to say for the record that, yes, I'm aware that the Kennedys were corrupt as fuck. Oh, yes. Joe Kennedy was up, was suited up. Oh, with yes. Organized crime. And that's how JFK got the White House. Yeah. But can you just imagine? Because I was raised very Irish Catholic. We literally had a 16 by 20 headshot of JFK in our basement. It was so creepy. So can you just imagine you are like all the Kennedys up in heaven, Rose and JFK and Bobby and all of them up there, you know, and they're just like, what the fuck happened? And they're Teddy's up there Bobby going, like, Teddy's up Teddy's there like, going, I'm not the fuck I'm, up anymore. I'm not the worst one anymore. <laughs> all I did was kill an intern. <laughs> Fuck and everyone's fuck. looking at Bobby and Bobby's uh, like, dude, I died when he was eight. I don't know what to tell you. JFK Jr. is like, I was in a plane crash and he's a bigger wreck than I am. Yeah. And I mean, even JFK better. JFK even... was like the last hope, the last gasp of hope for that family. Even better. And now, he, you know, now he's resurrected and in QAnon. Now, almost 10 years later, Kennedy said he was prompted to come clean ahead of an anticipated New Yorker expose. So he put this video on social media and then said, quote, looking forward to see how seeing how you spin this one. As though they have to now. I mean, it's the part that. The part that was a bummer for me is I don't know if you still watch John Oliver on Sunday nights. I love watching John Oliver. Uh -huh. His whole deep dive last night was about Robert F. Kennedy Jr. <laughs> he did 20 minutes on this guy and the video dropped like while the show was on the air. Ah. So John Oliver and his whole writing team are just today are just sitting around like motherfucker. Like, that was a gold mine. If we'd waited one more week. This is this is kind of like somebody's about to throw a water balloon at you. So you're like, oh, you can't get me. And you shit yourself. <laughs> right. That's and just, like he thinks these things are so he thinks he sounds so reasonable is the scary thing. Right. He's like, no, 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 no. They're going to make it sound weird. Let me explain. What? Let me what explain, in the, Roseanne. What in the <laughs> fuck? What is happening? Are you seeing? I, I hope everyone at home can see why we didn't could not ignore this one. It's just too no. weird. This is we fuck. And like he's on TikTok, and on TikTok he he's he was talking. He made a nice little video about these two ravens that he's trained. And someone I work with was like, "I'm just gonna vote for the nice raven man." And I'm like, "No, you don't understand how crazy." And she's like, "What? I thought he was just a cool weirdo with ravens." And I'm like, "No." There is crazy there that does not sleep. But guess what? There's even more this week. There's other stuff that happened. This one comes from uh, Savannah, Georgia, where I used to live. I used to go to this McDonald's, which makes this all the weirder. Um, have you ever, I mean, you've done the retail, I've done the retail. You know what it's like when it gets super busy. 
and yeah. there's not enough people and you wish to God, fuck, I wish they'd just all go the fuck away. I don't care if we don't make money. And everybody I don't wants to yell at you that there's not enough people. Right. I'm, like you I'm can not, do something about it. You're like, you have no real stake in the business. You're, you're getting paid either way. So you're like, I just wish they all go the fuck away. This guy made his wish come true. And he really wishes probably now that he did not. Did he send them all to the cornfield? Worker frustrated by busy McDonald's get prison for lighting dumpster on fire. Well, that's a bit on the nose as performance art goes. <laughs> Georgia man got five years in federal prison for lighting a dumpster on fire because the McDonald's he was working at was too busy. Joshua Daryl McGregor, 34, lit the fire last year, pled guilty to arson this spring, and was sentenced to prison in order to pay restitution on the property loss. Uh, McGregor was working at McDonald's in Savannah when he became frustrated by how busy the restaurant was. So prosecutors say he lit a piece of cardboard on fire and tossed it into the restaurant's dumpster, which was full of cardboard and other flammable materials. You can just imagine how much grease by proxy ends up in a McDonald's trash can. It's not even like they're dumping the grease in there. It's like is, it's saturated. How did he have the time? Because I've worked at Starbucks, and when, we're, when we were slammed at the Starbucks, I certainly did not have time for arson. I didn't have time to stop and spell the word arson. I don't know. It's like, boss, it's I need a break. I'm gonna go pee. Which I, I mean, by yeah, which I, I mean, been on like his. 10 minute break, which I mean, pee and not light the place on fire. Okay. So, the fire became Why so in prison though. Uh, the fire became so intense that drive through customers had to back out of the parking lot and the rest uh, restaurant was forced to temporarily close. McGregor also filmed the fire with his cell phone. How did you have the time? It couldn't have been that busy, bro. Wimp. You ain't been there. You ain't been in the trenches. You got time for that? No. I don't know why he went to federal prison. I do not yeah. know. But. Like, was I, this McDonald's a front for the post office? I don't know. What's, what I will try. I'll try and look and see what the exact charge was. Uh, it's temporarily closed wrestling. Um. Why was it arson? Why? I don't understand why this was federal. Yeah. Um, arson is violent crime, destroys property, blah, blah, blah. Assistant charge for the ATF Atlanta Field Division. Um, let's see. ATF. Savannah's arson use it. Case was investigated by Savannah Fire Department, Savannah Police Department, Bureau of AT uh, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives, and prosecuted for the U.S. by Southern District of Georgia Special Assistant U.S. Attorney. So, yeah, it doesn't explain why this was federal. And why the fuck was the ATF involved? There were no alcohol, tobacco, firearms, or explosives involved. There was cardboard and a lighter. This is weird. They just got, they got really mad at this guy. They need Mulder and Scully on this motherfucker, because I feel like this guy took a fall. And, you know, this was back when you could actually afford to eat McDonald's. So, you know they were busy. Like today, if if the, if a, if a McDonald's was caught on fire and there was flames and stuff, I'd be like, I'd be out of the parking lot in five seconds. But back then, I'd be like, I don't know, I can get like ten chicken McChicken sandwiches for ten bucks. Do Maybe I'll just wait it out. Maybe I'll just wait it out. When the dollar menu turned into like the dollar sixty nine value menu, yeah. Like the whole thing was like, you can get these things for a dollar. And then they were like, hmm, not really. That's Sarah, uh, uh, Sarah and I went by uh, Taco Bell the other day for a treat because it's been a while. 25 bucks for Taco Bell. Oof. Oof indeed. Eddie, anyway, right? I mean, I hit, I hit like burger king on the way home today just because i knew i was going to be sitting in traffic and i was really hungry and it cost me six bucks which is not bad ronan says maybe the fire destroyed the only ice ice cream machine that actually worked see that's why it's uh, federal 
It's all a conspiracy. Okay, so next up, we have people in so many of these stories that do stuff where the risk reward uh, proposition is way out of whack, right? Like the risk is so much exponentially higher to whatever yeah. possible reward you could get out of doing such a risky thing. I don't understand the calculus of this next one, but okay, sure. You wanted to do that. <sighs> Woburn lawyer, three others charged with trying to sneak drugs into Rhode Island jail. Uh, it's Woburn. Woburn? Okay. I know there's only it's, one O. There's only Woburn. one O. So it's 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 a liar. It's fucking Massachusetts, it's, man. It's it's already a liar. It's already a fucking liar. They have so, a town spelled like Worcestershire and it's called Worcester. It's fucking Massachusetts. Court documents unsealed in federal court in Providence, Rhode Island on Tuesday revealed that a Massachusetts attorney, Connecticut woman, and two individuals detained in the Donald W. Wyatt detention facility. I just, as a side note, I don't understand how anyone would ever want to have a prison named after them for any reason. Like, really? Right. That's that. That's the legacy you want? Okay. Um, if I do they, something amazing with my life and you want to name shit after me, please make it like a cat rescue. It's not a prison. And not a prison. Like, you can name a water fountain after my ass. That's fine, but sure. not a prison. A little garden. Yeah, they participated in a scheme to smuggle contraband during a visit to the prison in July 2023. Attorney uh, Teresa DeJoseph, 50, of Woburn, allegedly used her credentials as an attorney to meet with Sean Hart, 46, in a visiting room that did not have a plexiglass screen. Correctional officers filed an incident report after noticing that after noticing that De Joseph was acting suspicious and monitoring the correctional the correctional officers movements. I'm having a problem talking tonight. A review of the detention detention facility found text messages between De Joseph and Hart showing that De Joseph sent Hart personal photos of herself and screenshots showing cash app or sports betting transactions that she appeared to have engaged in on Hart's behalf. So it's already getting weird. Joseph was temporarily suspended from visiting Hart, but later allowed to resume visits. In December, Wyatt detainee Douglas Samuel Douglas, 26, allegedly arranged, arranged for his girlfriend. Cut so many people here. Hanessa Stedford uh, to meet to Joseph outside the detention center and give the attorney 10 sheets of paper soaked in synthetic marijuana. So the idea this here is a was fucking tel telenovela. The there idea here was <laughs> the idea here was they were going to disguise drugs as paperwork for for his for lawyers' papers. And they were actually drugs. And they thought they were slick. Wyatt officers seized the paper during the Joseph's visit with Hart that day. The papers went sent to an FBI testing lab where they were confirmed to contain Schedule One controlled substances. I don't think papers that are soaked in synthetic marijuana, they probably don't smell right. They probably don't That's what look I was right. Like regular marijuana has a rather strong smell. I yeah. don't know if the synthetic smells the same, but you're gonna notice that. I, I, I. Why would you do this? Like you already got caught. You're already bad at this. You got caught by placing sports bets for your client. So you're already not slick. You know you're not slick. You're why would you gonna get disbarred? Oh, yeah. By the way. If, if you're lucky. If you're lucky. But what you thought, OK, this plan, this is sure fire to work. What could the payoff for this have possibly been? Or, or were you just that I bad mean, of a lawyer? I assume he was going to sell it inside. Well, yeah, but. I don't think I don't, I don't think know they what have, the lawyer gets out of it. Right. Like, uh, how bad of a lawyer are you that this, like, you know, I need a new revenue stream. I need to diversify. 
because, you know, the law thing ain't working out. So now everybody has been charged and they're people who are already in jail. They made it worse. People who are in jail are going to be in jail. What the fuck? Risk reward. And this guy needs some lawyers. Yeah, everybody needs a lawyer now. Maybe you can find a good lawyer who's not going to do this sort of stupid shit. All right. This is from uh, Minnesota. Uh, hmm. Very weird this, uh, version of Minnesota nice here. Um, so again, trying to steer clear of political stories, this really isn't that this is just one really gigantic asshole. And oddly enough, he assumed what happened to him was political when in fact, no, well, you'll see it's, it's this, this fucking idiot. Um, Saginaw man. Arrested for threats to use gun after his political signs were moved. Man is in jail, accused of making a threat to shoot the person who was moving his political signs. Now you're already you're going, well, you're not supposed to do that. Wait for it. Wait for it. Things are heating up on the campaign trail, both nationally and locally. In Saginaw County, the man is behind bars for a threatening note that was found. The note mentioned a camera was set up and it indicates the person was watching the area. Though it indicates the person had a gun and had a message for anyone that touched his signs, signs that are not permitted on this particular property. Driving by Sears, this is Tom Roy of Roy's Landscaping, I noticed some political signs on the right of way. Roy's Landscaping maintains the old Sears property. The Republican knows that six political signs, including the one for Donald Trump, were not allowed in the area. So already the guy is the same same party as you. It's private property and it's in the right of way. Anything between a sidewalk and the road is right of way. No political signs in Saginaw Township are allowed. Saturday night, Roy took the signs down and placed them against a green maintenance box so the person could pick up their signs. So already this is a very Minnesota story. He didn't trash them. He didn't fuck with. He's like, oh, they, they probably did know this was illegal. I'm just going to move these over here and then they can come and get them tomorrow and everything will be fine. Roy went to the Sears property the next day for more landscaping work and the signs were back up in the right of way. And there's also this note on the nearby lamppost, quote, states a threat. They are in the far distance with a camera with a nine millimeter gun. So I was a little worried because it was very specific. The note goes on to claim it was a lame Democrats attempt to remove the signs. Roy called police. The signs were taken away. And sometime later, a 50 year old Saginaw Township man complained to police his signs were stolen. Police say he admitted to he wrote the note and was booked into a county jail on a threat of terrorism charge. It's not been arraigned. Yet, the subject's being held on a false report or threat of terrorism. If charged with a crime and convicted, the man faces up to 20 years in prison. No, 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 but you missed the best part. You, you, oh, right, yeah. you blew right past the best part. Which, go Police ahead. also confiscated a CO2 powered BB gun <laughs> from the suspect. <laughs> Not a nine millimeter. <laughs> Now, the, 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 now those granted, things could have put your eye out. The, they can really sting, though. <laughs> like you, the, those things really smart. You'll be feeling that. You'll be like fucking you're really feeling across that. Across the street with your red rider. Don't fuck up my farm. Just the Dude. entire the, the the level of assumptions that were made here. That escalated immediately to I'm a fucking shoot you. And they, I love how the guy was just like, oh, he he probably didn't know. So we're just not, we're just going to make sure he's got these for tomorrow because he probably put a lot of work into these. We I don't want to throw that up. That I don't want to mess him up. That was probably a lot of time and effort on his part. How can you just fucking fuck's sake? I thought it was illegal to do this, to be this, not to, I mean, obviously to do this too. I thought it was illegal to have this kind of an attitude in Minnesota. I thought you. I like. I thought you had to. You got. You would get a ticket if you were this much of an asshole. 
right? I, I, I didn't know this was possible. I mean, he did only have a BB gun. He did only have a BB gun. That's true. Just come on, Fucking man. Ralphie in his silver cowboy outfit across the street. Come on, Black Bart. <laughs> I also love that he tattled on himself. That's what mwah, chef's kiss. Perfect part there. There's You never you, you never watched Schitt's Creek, did you? I did not. There's Moira. Probably should. Catherine O'Hara's character runs for the town council mm -hmm. and all her campaign signs get stolen. And it's a whole thing. And she runs this whole who would do this? My opponent is dirty. And it turns out she stole her own signs so that she could do that. <sighs> That's what this feels like, except way worse and not funny. Hello, Hi, Grady. Hello, Grady. What are you what are you messing with, please? I got to do stuff. Hi, Bozo. Hi, that's yes, that's the microphone. Hi. Hi. Yes, we're busy. We're paying for your food, stupid. It's a bonk. <sighs> What are you this whining microphone? about? Fuck this microphone. What are you whining about? <laughs> Little nitwit. All right. Next up, deep in the heart of Texas, it's another one of these stories. But every time it seems we get one of these, it's like they, they manage to escalate them and put their own little spin on it. It's like a cover song, you know? Only instead of, you know, being like, oh, that's an interesting evolution. They just know that's just shittier and shittier and shittier. It's like Shatner doing them. Mr. Timbery Man. Anyway. Um, Texas bound flight I'm, diverted. I'm, I'm enjoying watching Grady just rubbing his face on the mic. Yes, I know. Texas bound flight diverted after wild shirtless man tries to open cabin door. Eric Nicholas Gopko, 26, is accused of assaulting a flight attendant and damaging an aircraft. A 26 year old man with inter uh, was charged with interference with a flight and attempted damage to an aircraft after a series of wild outbursts on an American airline flight from Seattle to Texas. American Airlines flight number 2101 was diverted to Salt Lake City International after Eric Nicholas Gapko began behaving erratically. According to federal grand jury indictment, Gapko assaulted and intimidated a flight attendant and aircraft crew members and attempted to open exterior cabin doors, quote, multiple times before being restrained by crew and passengers. He's also accused of propositioning a flight attendant for sex, vaping on the plane and bothering other passengers. Passenger video shared by WFAA in Dallas shows uh, Gapco shirtless and being walking, walked down the aisle in flex cuffs, shouting loudly, quote, I'm sane. I am sane. OK, see, if you're screaming that you're sane, you have already <laughs> lost the argument. That's the second you're shouting, I am sane. <laughs> It You've might be already true, lost. But nobody's gonna believe you. It gets better. Were they in the air? Yeah. They were. Why it do gets... people keep trying to open the fucking door with the plane in the air? You will For die. Fortunately, this seemed like they were high enough that, it, that the pressure was would not allow for it. Thankfully, but wait, you will it die. Get, it gets better though. Prior to being restrained, Gabco locked himself in a plane lavatory. According to the indictment, he was arrested by law enforcement at Salt Lake City International Airport after an emergency landing. Come out of there. No, you're just going to yell at me. <laughs> he tried to hide in the bathroom. Like, did you think they were just everyone was going to get off and they were going to be like, oh, I don't know. We must have missed him. Guess that's sir, lunch. Sir, occupied. Occupado. <laughs> uh, it's, I'm going to be a minute. I had the fish. It's going to take a few. That's a deep cut for some folks out here. Serving meals on a flight from Seattle to Texas. <laughs> I regularly fry from Colorado to Jersey, and they're not serving meals. 
You know, I we 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 talk about all these people who keep bringing weapons on the plane. Maybe they've got a point. Keep trying to bring like knives and guns and shit on. Maybe they've got a point. At the, now, maybe maybe they actually. Maybe they've got a point. Maybe not, but maybe. I just. I'd rather people start trying to smuggle tubes of caulk on the plane to keep the fucking door closed. <laughs> Some duct tape. Bring duct tape on the plane. I don't like flying to begin with. I don't like having to think about is some fucking idiot going to try and open the door? I don't need that in my life. The last one this week. We've never had this before. I didn't even know that people would, would do this. This, this is, it it just, it, it boggles the mind. Once you get to a certain point in your life, you've attended a few funerals. It sucks. And there's a vibe at a funeral because, you know, someone died. You're not really feeling real perky. You're not really, you know, it sucks. So I don't know how this happened. I don't know how people thought this was. Holy shit. Uh, get, get off my screen, autoplay. Thank you. Fight at funeral home stemmed from ongoing high school dispute. I need the people involved to still be in high school. Well, not everyone was. How do I spell? How do I pronounce that? That's New York. How do I say that? I'll be honest. I don't fucking know. Cohoes? Cohoes? Co co I don't. I think Cohoes. I, I am not familiar with that place in New York. Because Cohoes sounds like something entirely different. I do want to point out, I forgot to say this during the RFK story. I think it's funny that he refers to the place he was going as upstate when he could still get back to New York City for dinner. That's not fucking upstate. If you can still get to the city in time for dinner, you're not upstate. Tara, for some of these Thank people, five, mi five minutes outside of the city is upstate. All yeah, right. But it's bullshit. A funeral took place on Wednesday at Mara's funeral home after a wake was held on Tuesday for a 39 for 39 year old Brandy Carpenter. The wake held for Carpenter was interrupted by a large fight outside the funeral home. According to co-host police chief Todd Walden, multiple police agencies responded to the fight of over 100 people. Wow. 100 people started the fight just outside the funeral home. Police say seven people were arrested for disorderly conduct. Those arrested have ages ranging from 15, 14 to 50. So it was not all high school. All seven defendants were released with appearance tickets for city court. Uh, Christiana Kushnick, a 17-year-old who witnessed the brawl, said the fight broke out as a result of a dispute at a high school. Kushnick was at their wake with a friend who was related to the deceased female. Uh, Christiana's mom, Lacey Kushnick, said her daughter has been having issues with others at school for about two months, and the issues have considered, continued outside of school. Christiana said police arrived at the wake uh, after a fight broke out. At that point, more physical altercations took place, which said required police to call in help. First, it was just two or three police cars. They couldn't handle it. They started calling everybody in. Everybody started coming out of their houses and just everybody got involved. Police Chief Walden said the fact that the fight happened at this type of occasion is unfortunate. You think? So we're not real clear why this happened. Yeah, like this is a lot of words that tell me nothing. Only that it started and then snowballed. Do you remember that scene in, in the Matrix Reloaded with the Smiths that just come pouring out of the building to fight Neo? That's what's going on in my head right now. People coming out of their buildings, just all the da, 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 all these people just pouring out to start fucking brawling outside this fucking funeral. What the hell? But like no explanation why. None. An issue at the school. 
an issue. Some fucking issue. Some goddamn issue. My God. And this but how, family. There's a how some 50 year old get involved in this shit. I don't know. Honestly, I would think it would. It, it's it's. It's kind of badass a little bit. I mean, it sucks for everybody who attended the funeral, but it, it, if I was the one, I'm like, yeah, people are kicking ass at my funeral. <laughs> They're going to remember my shit. Yeah. Just in the. Like, I. <laughs> I imagine some guy running up. By God, he's got the money in the bank. I just. I just Come on, man. It's a funeral. I, I've at a funeral every single one I've been to. It's like you could not. I'm, I'm like, I just want to take care of this. And then I'm emotionally exhausted and expended. I'm not like, you know what? I'm going to kick somebody in the nuts when we get done here. I'm, I'm going to go up and nut, Without nut going punch into somebody. Specifics, I have been near people who very much wanted to kick somebody's ass at a funeral. Mm -hmm. Um. I have been the person that wanted to kick somebody's ass at a funeral, actually. Um, but I'm a fucking grown up, so I didn't do it. Yeah, I mean, it. you don't do it. At the, it's the funeral is not what this is for. The wake is what this is for. Uh, yeah. yeah. If you have a br get, brawl at a wake, that's kind of yeah. Everyone's but drunk. Not everybody everyone's does wakes like not every culture uh, does wakes. Uh, just it uh. god damn so apparently this town is just is near Albany um I, I, just because I, I had to look it up because I've never heard of it you know they had a priest there who was like I don't know how I write this one up I I was, I I story by Ireland Walker. What a name! <laughs> That's what a name, yeah. So, uh, I guess I guess the first thing we learned this week: <laughs> save that shit for the wake. Or you know, funerals <laughs> at least for Irish people usually have. I don't like to call it an after party, but that's kind of what it is. Like after the it's service, kind of everybody goes somewhere, whether it's to a house or a restaurant, and people usually are drinking. Get in your fight there. Right. Like the, the, you're, if you're ever in the if you're ever in the vicinity of potentially knocking over the corpse. Yeah. No, 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 no. Like, wait until the deceased has been put in the ground or their urn safely on a shelf. We have learned that this uh, the, the worst TikTok trend is trying to open the fucking airport air, airplane door. Like th th all the cool kids are trying it and it's terrible. Um, you will die. You will. Whew. You're He's not going to be like Harrison Ford in Air Force One. You will die. Yeah. That's, that's not how that shit works. Um, we've learned that if, if your political signs disappear, maybe before you go to like DEFCON 1, maybe check jurisdiction and property rights first. Maybe. Or, you know, if they, di if they don't even disappear, they're just moved. Oh, they're right over here. There you go. Have a nice day. Just oh, put he's going to shoot me now. Lawn. Just put it on the fucking lawn. Yeah, seriously. We have learned that um, if uh, if you're trying to smuggle drugs into your client, you're probably the worst lawyer. Like you, you are Lionel Hutz is sitting there going, damn, you suck. Shit. Uh, <laughs> we have learned that if you've got time to lean, you've got time to clean, not set the dumpster on fire. Why I, know I, I don't believe that story. Because you had time to set a fire and film it, it wasn't that busy. <laughs> Fucking amateur. 
And finally, I've this gone week, nine hours at a stretch without peeing. Finally, this week, we learned the son of Robert Kennedy, the nephew of JFK, found a roadkill bear with the intent of eating it, put it in his car, and then thought, the hell with it. I'm going to dump it in the middle of uh, Central Park. And he has already, by the way, had to deny eating a dog. Think of all the millions of people there are in New York City. What are the chances? It was Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Like watching the news report on this today has been amazing because they're all like, we we covered this story. Here's the footage of us covering this story. We wouldn't have called this one. Like quite quite literally, he could have he could have plausibly said, come on. You really think I did? I'm Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Come on. I dumped a bear in Central Park. Instead, he went, nope, I did it. I had a ball with it. Fucking dumped the bear. He actually said, oh, my God, I thought my I I hope my fingerprints aren't on that bike. He thought he. mm. And there's a picture of him with his hand in the bear's mouth. Like he took funny pictures pretending the bear was biting him. Tomorrow we'll have a picture of him fucking himself because that's what he's doing. How? Do- and there are still people that are like, "This is my guy." <sighs> okay. We'll put it this way: he might not be respected, but every other world leader will definitely fear his ass. <laughs> 